it's Lucy Fink. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm gonna share with you 20 things that I do not buy anymore. So welcome to my kitchen. I figured I would do this as more of a vlog style video where I sort of walk around to the various areas of my apartment and then mention the items that are relevant to that specific area. So I'm starting here in our kitchen. It's pretty bright and white and clean, but the sink is cluttered up with dirty dishes. Michael will have to do those later, right? Before we dive into the video, I wanna give a huge thank you to Grove Collaborative for sponsoring this video. I've spoken about them before on my YouTube channel, but their Beyond Plastic initiative is incredible and honestly so relevant for this video, so I will be sharing more about them in a bit. And also, I'll be giving you a great code and a gift, so stay tuned. Item number one is plastic Tupperware. So let me put this down because my arm is dying better. Instead of plastic Tupperware, we now use glass storage containers and then things like bees wrap and silicone bags. One thing I will say about plastic Tupperware is that if you already have a lot of that in your kitchen, it's not necessarily, you know, environmentally conscious to just throw it out or get rid of it. So for a while, I actually did use my plastic Tupperware because I had a bunch and I didn't want to waste it. But eventually when our wedding came around, we got a whole new set of glassware from our wedding registry. So I took the plastic Tupperware and I donated it. Throwing it out, I think defeats the purpose. So obviously use it until you have someone to give it to and then pass it along and get yourself glass. I actually think glass is better because plastic can leak into your food if you store it in different forms of plastic, so glass. Number two is harsh hand soaps and dish soaps and things that are just made of chemicals. We instead use non-toxic, clean, safe household products. This goes for things like laundry detergent and soaps, but this right here is the soap that we use and it's actually a glass pump that comes with refills in aluminum bottles. So the bottles are recyclable and then you can just reuse the pump and I feel like it's much, much more useful than just continuing to buy plastic soap bottle dispensers and all that stuff. So number three, this item is not something that we have entirely cut out 100%, but we have scaled back majorly and that is paper towels. Tawayas de papel. Is that how you say it in Spanish? Si, señora. Oh, good, okay. Tawayas de papel. Pretty much right now, we only use paper towels if we have a major urgent spill that we cannot control with things like our dish towels, which are down here, and also our Swedish dishcloths. So the Swedish dishcloths are my new favorite item. They're just absorbent pieces of fabric that kind of get hard and kind of flat and crispy when they're dried out, but then you just wet them, wring them out, and then wipe a surface down, just like you're using a towel, but it's incredibly absorbent, and then you just take that Swedish dishcloth and you rinse it in the sink, lay it out to dry, and it gets nice and hard again. And I've been loving those. I've been using those wherever possible. I also use things like microfiber cloths for cleaning and these for cooking. Dish towels are amazing for any time you're cooking if things just like fly on the counter and you wanna do a quick wipe. But I really try to not use the paper towels unless it is urgent and an emergency. Item number four in the kitchen is plastic water bottles. I haven't bought these for years and years and years. I think I've purchased one plastic water bottle in the past year and that was when I was out and about, not close to home, and I was parched. I don't need it. I need it! I thought I was gonna pass out, so I bought a water bottle. But besides that, I really do my best to just refill a bottle throughout the day. So actually down here, I have a lot of extra different types of bottles. Let's see if I can find it. This swell bottle, what do you know? It's right by where I've been working all day. This bottle is my bottle of choice. And I refill this all day, probably seven or eight times, and that's what I drink from. So I never am opening the fridge to plastic water bottles. The next items on the list are plastic straws and plastic cutlery. So we have different types of reusable straws in our kitchen. We have glass straws, which you do have to be careful with. I have had a couple of these straws chip in my coffee, and then it's kind of like mingling in there with the ice, and you just don't know if it's safe for drinking. But my favorites are these silicone straws. I love using these and I just wash them out with this little stick 
washer. And then I also have some stainless steel metal straws. I've sort of just collected a whole bunch of different types of reusable straws over the past couple of years, and the truth is I use them all. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've likely seen my morning coffee pours, and you know that I'm always popping a different reusable straw in there, so that's just proof that I use them all. And then on the cutlery front, we do live in New York City, and we do order takeout quite a bunch, but one of the things we've gotten in the habit of doing is writing in the notes section of our food takeout orders. Please, no plastic cutlery because we're eating it here anyway, so there's no point of getting plastic cutlery. I have not received that in a really long time. Up next, this one's sort of similar to the plastic Tupperware. It is plastic wrap. Instead of using saran wrap to store unused food in the fridge, that's where we use our beeswax wrap, which I keep down here. So this is actually like a small-ish piece of bees wrap, but it has a really nice texture. It smells like honey, no surprise there. Just to show you that in use, I had an avocado, half an avocado wrapped in this this morning, and now I just popped it in the sink because I'm just gonna rinse it off with some Castile soap and cold water before storing it. Another type of storage are these bags. I have loads of different reusable bags that are really easy to clean, and also many are dishwasher safe, and you can just throw things in here. I have avocado and an onion in this one, and it zips, keeps it very nice and fresh as if it were in glass storage that was vacuum sealed. And that's my replacement for using plastic wrap. Oh, I just remembered something. So we have here this parchment paper, and I made a video recently baking, I think it was my meal prep video recently, and I used this parchment paper a lot, and some people were commenting that that's not sustainable and that I should get these silicone mats for my baking trays, so I did a little bit of digging and I discovered that this parchment paper we use is compostable, so thank you to anyone who was calling that out for me because now whenever I use this, I just put it in our compost bin in the freezer and we can drop it off at a commercial compost site just like anything else. So that's a great little thing about my parchment paper. Moving on to our next item, trendy vitamins. I no longer purchase trendy vitamins just because I've seen an ad for them or they look cool or I see other influencers or creators using them. I just feel like vitamins have become something to me that is actually like very personal. You're supposed to take vitamins that your body needs and only recently have I gotten some blood tests and figured out what I'm actually deficient in. So right now, I'm taking four things. I'm taking a multivitamin that my doctor recommended that had a lot of things that I was deficient in. I'm taking an omega-3. I'm taking vitamin D3, which I'm also deficient in, as is probably everyone. And then the last thing I'm taking is a probiotic for my gut health. All of these items were vitamins that my doctor recommended specifically for me based on my blood tests. So trendy vitamins are out and I no longer spend my money on those. Another item in the kitchen is my produce wash. I used to purchase a couple of brands of produce wash and then I realized, what's the point? It's so easy to make and I just keep it in this little spritz bottle. Ugh, sorry. This is just equal parts distilled white vinegar and filtered water. So easy to make and I just refill it anytime it's running out. I don't have to buy anything and I keep it in this little tiny thing which lasts a really long time. And then I spritz it on pretty much every piece of produce that I'm going to eat, whether I'm gonna eat it raw or whether I'm gonna cook it, doesn't matter. I just use the produce wash and I feel good about it. Next item in the kitchen is pre-cut fruit. I used to go to the grocery store and I used to walk through the fruit aisle and I'd be like, oh, Cut mango, ooh, cut pineapple, that looks good. Ooh, cut watermelon, yum. But I realized that that is just such a colossal waste of plastic, especially when the grocery store has all of those other items in whole fruit form. There's no need to buy them in plastic. I personally believe that every item on the grocery shelf should just be purchased naked. When I go to the grocery store and I go to the produce aisle, I do not take any of those little plastic bags to put things in. I actually just put veggies and fruit straight into my shopping cart. Even things that are loose and small like Brussels sprouts or mushrooms, I just take a handful and put them in my shopping cart. And that's easy to do because I always know that when I'm checking out, I have my own bags. Like I bring tote bags like this to the grocery store all the time. Throw the stuff in the cart naked and I do not buy the fruit that comes pre-cut in plastic. And this was actually a upgrade for me because not too long ago, I did purchase some stuff that was pre-cut in plastic. I actually think in a video maybe last year, I had some garlic 
here that was purchased pre-peeled in a plastic container. And ever since that video, I've just been like, what, why did I do that? Why would I ever do that again? We only have half of it left, but it's, you know, the bundle, just like this. And you can just peel off individual cloves. Very easy. No need to get them in plastic, so I'm over that. All right, let's talk about Grove Collaborative. As we're going through this video, a lot of the items that you're seeing are actually from Grove. I've made a lot of sustainable product swaps from Grove and their product line, and honestly, they're just such a great company, and they have this incredible initiative called Beyond Plastic. It's their five-year plan to solve the single-use plastic issue for home and personal care products. Grove, as a company, has actually been 100% plastic neutral for over one year, and for every single ounce of plastic that they sell, they collect and then recycle an ounce of plastic pollution. So they're doing really good things as a company. This is why I get so excited to talk about them on my platforms, and I hope you're just as excited to start using them. By 2025, Grove will be 100% plastic free. They're working really hard right now to remove plastic from every single thing that they sell and make. I just love that a lot of their home products and their cleaning supplies are plant-based, they're sustainable. So the hand soap, the dish soap, those reusable bags, the bees wrap, those cleaning concentrates that I was talking about, it all is from Grove. And honestly, I have been using their products in my home for such a long time. I've recently switched over to using even more Grove products because I just really wanna support this company and their mission, and I think they're doing incredible things for the environment. I've said this in videos before, but when it comes to reducing the amount of plastic you use and just becoming more sustainable overall, it just takes little tiny swaps over the course of even a year. And by the end of that year, your home and the environment you live in will be a lot more eco-friendly and you'll just feel better that you're doing at least something to care for the planet. Listen, none of us can be perfect. I'm definitely not perfect, but every single day I'm learning and I'm making small changes and you can too. So I'm giving you this unique link that you can use. It's grove.co slash lucyfinkmay21. And anyone who signs up for Grove using this link is gonna get a free gift with their purchase. So thank you Grove for sponsoring the video. Get your free gift and now let's get back into the video. The next item takes us away from the kitchen and to this little hallway closet of mine here, which is where on the bottom shelf I store all of our tote bags and those different types of just, you know, carrying bags that we take with us to the grocery store. Because the next item on my list of things I don't buy is plastic bags at the store. And the reason I'm including this on a list of things I don't buy is because actually at grocery stores these days, a lot of stores ask if you need a bag and if you do need a bag, they charge you for the bag. So oftentimes you have to buy the bag. Personally, I think that's a great incentive for grocery stores to do to make their bags cost something so that people hopefully remember to bring their own bags from home. But we legitimately have... <laughs> <laughs> Michael knew that as soon as I opened this closet, I was gonna see that he put our toilet paper on top of our bags, which is not where this goes. But anyway, right there. These are all of our reusable bags. This is them. <laughs> this is a horrible shot, but just trust me, I have a pile of reusable bags for the grocery store. I'm in the living room for this next item because next on my list is cable TV. We have cut the cord. We are cord cutters. Up until this point, we have been using Hulu with live TV, but as of this month, we are getting rid of that and we're just gonna be using our streaming services like Netflix and all that good stuff. We do not feel like cutting the cable cord has put us at a loss or at a, uh, it hasn't decreased the amount of content that we have access to. We truly feel like we have an overabundance of content at our fingertips. So not only do I have a multitude of streaming services to work with here, but we also have YouTube that I can watch on the TV, which I love doing. We also have the Paramount Plus app, and because that's owned by Viacom CBS, which Viacom is the company that owns Nickelodeon, there is so much good stuff on Paramount Plus. Any people born in the 90s, I'm telling you, this is your jam. We have Rocco's Modern Life, we have Cat Dog, we have SpongeBob, we have As Told by Ginger, Wild Thornberries, and I mean, it's just my Nickelodeon childhood dream. So I have everything I could ever want. Like, I don't need cable. The next item that I can talk about while I'm out here is conventional scented candles. I know that a lot of candles these days are like fruity tooty cookies 
cookie dough flavor, and I don't know, I think that they are just really bad for you. Things like air fresheners, plugins, things that just put unnecessary chemicals into the air. So that's one thing we've stopped buying is like artificially scented things. Instead, we only get candles that are either soy wax or coconut wax with natural essential oils. What's this one? 100% organic soy with a cotton wick, and all of them are scented with natural essential oils and just natural flavors. There's nothing artificial in them. And actually most of our candles these days are handmade, hand poured. So the next one is sort of similar to what I was talking about with the hand soap where we buy, you know, one glass bottle to refill and we have aluminum refills. I do something similar when it comes to cleaning supplies. We definitely used to be the type of people who would purchase those conventional cleaning supplies, things that were probably loaded up with a lot of toxic chemicals and just artificial things, things that you probably shouldn't be spraying around your home and I don't know, maybe there's not a lot of research to say that that is a problem, but I personally have tried to just clean up our lives in as many ways as possible, so we stick to natural and simple cleaning ingredients these days. I use a lot of distilled white vinegar, I use apple cider vinegar, and then I also use cleaning concentrates that are very, very environmentally friendly. So I have these glass spray bottles that I just refill, and then I buy glass bottles of cleaning concentrate and you just mix them with filtered water. I feel like, especially when I'm cleaning my kitchen and different areas like my dining table where I'm gonna eat from afterwards, I wanna make sure I'm not using harsh chemicals and anything that just has toxins in it. So I feel really good using those cleaning supplies and that's something I've cut out is those conventional cleaners. And the last item before we go into the bathroom here is wrapping paper. Pretty much you maybe only need to buy it once a year, maybe it's the holidays or maybe you just get it and then have it for the whole year. But we have started wrapping our presents with things like newspaper, which we always have in excess, and also our wallpaper, believe it or not. So if you remember when we moved into this apartment, this is peel and stick wallpaper. In my office, I have an entire wall of peel and stick wallpaper. This wall, and then in our living room, we have this other black and white wallpaper, which there was some leftover of right here. So this is the wallpaper for the living room, as you can see. And we have this extra little roll here. And this has lasted us quite a while. We've used this to wrap a bunch of gifts. So that's just an idea for you. If you don't wanna wrap things in newspaper or like compostable paper packaging, it can sometimes feel a little not festive. You know, I get that. So if you have wallpaper, or if you've ever put wallpaper on your wall, just save a little bit of the extra roll if you have any, and that's a great way to wrap up gifts. So now we are moving on to the bathroom. My room is a mess. Whoa. So onto my bathroom. My bathroom is very yellow, as you can see from the light that's coming out of there. So I'm putting you on the edge of the bed and we're just gonna film in front of the bathroom. First item in the bathroom are conventional period products. I got really skeeved out by tampons a little while back because I wasn't sure if they had any harsh toxic chemicals in them. So if I were to buy any tampons, I would always make sure that I was getting things that are like organic cotton tampons that are not leaving anything weird inside of me. For the most part, I just use this menstrual cup and I've made a lot of videos about this cup including one where I talk all about things that nobody taught me about a menstrual cup and I teach you how to insert it. I love this thing and I would highly recommend. Another thing I have when it comes to period products are these reusable organic cotton panty liners. So these just sort of snap on to your underwear. It's kind of just like putting a regular pad on but it's reusable which is great. I know that might freak some people out or some people might feel like well isn't it gonna get stained red? I mean, I've used this before and then I just washed it and there's absolutely no red stain on it. So there you go, proof. Oh, and lastly, for periods, I have started also using period underwear. I have a few different brands of period underwear that I like to rotate through. And whenever I go to sleep when I have my period, I just make sure that I wear period underwear with my cup. And that way if I do leak at all, it's like, Totally fine. The next bathroom item are plastic toothbrushes. So I used to get those all the time and then, you know, replace them every two months or so. Now I use an electric toothbrush and then I use a bamboo toothbrush for my retainer. And the electric toothbrush is great because yes, I do have to replace this head every so often, but this is the amount of plastic that is being tossed every time you replace the head versus an entire toothbrush body. So love my electric toothbrush and love the bamboo. Compostable. The next bathroom item that I've completely said 
goodbye to our plastic disposable razors. I now use this stainless steel razor. I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't wanna cut myself, but you just unscrew it and then you replace the blade inside. And the blades come in a pack of about 100 blades for like three to five dollars or something. So you can always keep this clean, keep reusing it, and it just lasts forever. Plus I love this one, it's rose gold. I'll link it in the description box. The next bathroom item is aluminum deodorant. I've completely parted ways with aluminum deodorants. Now I just use all natural aluminum free deodorants and I have a few different brands that I love and I play with. A couple of them come in actual you know, tubes. One of my favorite brands is Native and they've actually started to have plastic free tubes, which is great. Some other deodorant brands that I love come in glass jars and they're just like cream deodorants that you scoop up with your finger and they get super soft and creamy and you just rub them in. I actually like those a lot because I like the feeling of putting deodorant on and actually feeling my armpits. That's something I never did until a couple years ago. last bathroom item are single use face masks, like those sheet masks that you use once and throw away. I actually have rarely purchased these for myself, but working at Refinery29, I did get a lot of brands that sent me there, so I have tried out a lot of these types of face masks. But these days, the face masks that I use either come in a glass jar, things like a clay mask that you just scoop out and apply, or I've had some recent brands that I love that make face masks in powder form, and you just mix it with a little bit of water and it kind of activates the mask and turns into a liquid that you can then spread on your face. And I love those types of masks. Okay, we did it. 